Thanks. Thanks.
Hello, daytime viewers. <laughs> uh oh, I hear myself. Uh oh, I hear myself. There we go. <laughs> Hello, it's the daytime. Wow. <laughs> I had to stay in a coffin when the sun was up. Uh, that was that was a long time ago. Not anymore. What's going on? I don't even know the last time I did a daytime stream. It was a while ago. It was at least a month. Are you awake as you're sleeping hour? I actually sleep at normal degenerate hours. Where am I? Boink. There I am. I actually sleep at normal degenerate hours, all right? I sleep from, like, on average, 4.30 to 5 a.m. until, like, 12.30 <laughs> noon. Although yesterday I couldn't fall asleep. I just laid there for a while. It sucked. What up, comrade? <laughs> it's so bright. It is. Uh, so I figured this is my, it's my first daytime stream. I was going to play Mega Man. I got Mega Man X bundle on Nintendo, and I want to play that. And I figured that'd be a fun daytime thing. But I figured since we're just starting out, I would just react to stuff. I need to catch up on all the PC gamer things and the Xbox things. I haven't even seen the WoW trailer. So I figure I'll watch stuff and react to it like the cool kids. <laughs> no word on the job yet. That sucks. I mean, it still sounds like it's promising, though. I feel like they'll, they'll uh, message you soon. Dude, I didn't realize JonTron was episode two. Co-optional. Kind of crazy. Rake in the millions with the React content. Exactly. I'm going to do at least... Uh, so what I'm trying now is I'm going to do one React day a week. I don't need multiple React days. We're going to do one React day a week where I just watch stuff that I haven't seen, because then I can I can stay relevant with the the, the youth, <laughs> right? And the non-youth, where I can be like, oh, what are people watching? And people can recommend me stuff. Uh, <laughs> so be good. Like, I want to see the new WoW trailer. I haven't even seen that. That'll be good. Uh, oh yeah, I can open up fishing as well. Hold on. Good old fishing. Uh, you open it. <laughs> Krendor, yeah, Krendor reacts to previous week's content. 
<laughs> I'm a, I'm always a week behind, no matter what I do. There, there we go. I can wrap this down. Rare. I wish I could get rid of the the little like black bars around the fishing thing and just have it be transparent. There's gotta be a way to do that. Maybe they'll update it. Or maybe there is, and I just don't know. Whatever, it's fine for now. Technically, you've seen about half the new WoW trailer already. All right, great. <laughs> Jesse has VODs so we can react to Jesse's React to Gaming Show. Dude, we could do some React to others, like, stream, like, React to Jesse Reacts. We could do that. <laughs> we could actually do that. That'd be kind of fun. What's he going to do? Copyright strike me? Is he going to take me down? He won't do it. Um, I know where he lives. <laughs> do, 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 do. Let's see. What else is it showing me here? <laughs> this is all based off of like me reacting to stuff from previous streams. <laughs> oh yeah, we got resubs. Um, Spooky Stew with the 10 months, or no, the 11 months. It was 10 minutes ago. If I wait one more minute, then it's 11 months, 11 minutes ago. I'm going to wait the extra minute, so it's funny. TC Pilot, 80 months. Thank you, TC Pilot. Thank you, TC Pilot. Anchor Jim with 13. May the blue proto drake drop on your next mount run. If it does, I'll take credit. If not, blame Jesse. I like that. What the fuck? 13. Fuck. Take the 13 months. There it is. Spooky Stew with the 11 months, 11 minutes ago. What the fuck? I said it. Not that 11. Fuck. Thank you, Spooky Stew. Almost a one year. Grendor, I need to tell you, I need you to tell me to buy a second half Skaven Tide. It's not my fault when I can't pay my rent next month. Uh, yeah, do it. There's nothing like wasting all your money on Warhammer. <laughs> uh, I should know. Pound sign with the 103 months. Thank you, pound sign the tank. Mama Mia. How many, uh, dollar for 648? 60, so 2, 84, 96, 10. 108 is nine years. So only five months away from the nine years. They were the 103 months. I like how we got recommended a Japan Walk Red Light District video, and it's still probably more uh, PG friendly than just chatting on Twitch. <laughs> a video about the Red Light District's more PG friendly than the Twitch category. Um, let's see. Dum, dum, dum. We do have Jesse Cox laughs for nine minutes from eleven years ago. <laughs> That is, I mean, we got to check out that one. We got to check out Jesse Cox lives. <laughs> ABC commercial. I mean, I do love me some commercials. People watching a mall. Oh, it says people watching at a mall. Oh, I get it. People watching at a mall. Waffle House. Is that even real? One hour of classic alpha. Oh, I think this is real. I kind of want to see Waffle House training. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> hmm. Friend door, more like fart door. Guys, I'm gonna have that in the stream. <laughs> I'm gonna have that in the stream Thanks. for no reason. It's just, I, uh. <laughs> DKV with the 62 months. I crender happy almost summer. 
I almost said almost almost summertime. You didn't say summertime. You just said summer. Happy almost summer. Thank you, DKV. It's like every the sixty-two months. Also, Benji, how are you? We need to let's just play a game. I feel like we need to just get the group together. Me, you, Greg. Maybe Sam, if he's not doing sponsors or playing League. And we just play a game. I don't even care what it is. It could be... What's on my store? What's on my Steam store multiplayer? It could be Wobbly Life. It could be Garden Life Cozy Simulator. It could be God Eater 3. It could be... Bandle Tail. <laughs> uh, it could be... Another crab's treasure. Anything. Give me Garf. <laughs> yeah, we gotta do it. I have played Bellatro. In fact, I played Bellatro like months ago when I was sick. I was like February, I had a cold and I just played Bellatro a lot. Used <laughs> three single player games. One of them's gotta be not single player. Uh gotta be listen i don't know anything about games i i haven't watched anything about pc games or whatever in the last like week or however so that's why i'm reacting today to see what's going on <laughs> oh yeah glorp shit 03 that's a solid one i think we could probably pick that one up glorp shit 02 is kind of rough around the edges nothing like one nothing <laughs> nothing compares to the first a video about the hotel inside a bass pro shop what i didn't even know that was a thing honestly the garfield movie was all right again i've said this i, I meant to bring it up on cox and crendor the garfield movie was actually okay like for a kid's movie i'm judging it based on kids movie scale i'd give it like a 6.5 I like guess it was, was alright. People made it out like it was the worst movie ever. However, Chris Pratt brought it down a full grade. I think if Chris Pratt wasn't Garfield, maybe like a 7.5 on the kids movie scale. Uh, he truly just ruined my immersion of the movie. Like the worst part about Chris Pratt Garfield is it's just Chris Pratt. It's just Chris Pratt voicing Garfield. There's no like... This guy would make a perfect Garfield. Like, he doesn't sound like Garfield. Garfield, like, whenever you hear Garfield in any of the cartoons or anything, he's just like, hey guys, we Garfield. Like, he's got that more like, boo. <laughs> yeah, Bill Murray, well, I, I watched it on stream the other night. Bill Murray, much better Garfield. Way better Garfield. Chris Pratt's just like, hey, I'm Chris Pratt and I'm Garfield. Hey, Odie Lasagna. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Pratt here. I'm making shitloads of money. <laughs> I didn't, I'm doing this. He probably, you know what? Chris Pratt's probably never even read a Garfield comic. There, I said it. He's probably never even read a Garfield comic in his life. The, Gar <laughs> the Garfield manga is really solid. You gotta check that one out. Uh, right after you watch Tokyo Red Light uh, District Walk, of course. Smoking in Disney Lane. Uh, probably some executive producer big. He's probably like Chris Pratt's very cool, and then they gave him a bunch of money, and then he was Garfield. He's the he's the guy where every generation has one person everybody knows. And they're like, just put him in a movie. He can voice it. And they're like, uh, he doesn't really fit the voice. And they're like, yeah, it's Chris Pratt. He's cool. He's so cool. <laughs> Karen Line Ward, 101 months. I heard Garfield. We got lasagna. Thank you, Karen Line Ward. <laughs> It's like they have 101 months and Dalmatians. 
the original Garfield cartoon, Lorenzo Music voiced Garfield, and later Peter Venkman, the Ghostbusters cartoon, Bill Miller played live action, and later Garfield. Uh, ah, okay. Well, they're all better than Chris Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Pratt just, oh, somebody called John. Chris Pratt just, uh, there's no, like, acting in his voice, right? He's just, there's no, like, range. It's just, he's Chris Pratt. That's, that's his thing. It's like, when you hear him, you're not like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's him. Like, I think the best voice he did was probably Mario. Like, Chris Pratt as Mario was okay. It was better than I thought. And then every other Chris Pratt thing is just, oh, it's Chris Pratt. <laughs> so, that sucks. Thanks. Othar, Trig Vast, and 25 months. Wow, a daytime Krendor. It's me. I've appeared. Thank you for the 25 months. Yeah, honestly, Seth Rogen did help Chris Pratt out by just being Seth Rogen. Because he's just like, hey, I'm Donkey Kong. Yeah. <laughs> Here I am, Seth Rogen, Donkey Kong. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, it's impressive sometimes, the casting they do for, for voices. Like, at least, you know, like, you go to, like, watch Studio Ghibli films, like how in Howl's Moving Castle, they have, uh, what's his name, Christian Bale, is Howl or whatever. Like, he actually fits the role of it. Like, it's like, oh, okay, he actually fits the voice. Like, can you imagine if Studio Ghibli was like, we need Chris Pratt? <laughs> and they're like, okay, like, they wouldn't do something like that. Because they actually find voices that match characters. <laughs> Not just, like, get Chris Pratt. He's cool. Uh, Billy Bob Thornton and Princess Mononoke. Dude, what's his name? Uh, the other house movie, Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal was really good as what's his name? Uh, Calcifer. Uh, he was really good. He's, <laughs> he's not even cool. <laughs> The dude from Twilight Killing is a bird. The dude, he actually was a pretty good bird. He was solid in that. You can tell the people that like are actually good and really interested in voice acting versus the people that got paid to just do that. <laughs> and they're like, I don't do this shit. I want my money though. Jesse said that ask you to do E3 presenter voice. Apparently it's very good. <laughs> I, I did do it that one time for his like Coxcon thing. Uh, I have to like reharness my E3. Hold on. E3 2020 EA. Here we go. Oh, let me hear it again. Pause this. Here we go. E3 2020. Wait, where is it? <laughs> Donkey EA. Uh, E3 presentation. Full EA. Okay, here we go. This uh, should be 2019 or 2018. I don't know. 2019. It's more recent. Believe it. Can you believe it, LA? Okay, that's just. <laughs> Can you believe it, LA? Is this the. Yeah. They push on you and that sort of thing. So. Dude, is this. <laughs> Get to know our latest legend a little bit better. Apex Legends. Is this that one game that died? What's it called? Not Apex Legends, but... Dude, Jedi Fall in Order, okay. Is this it? What was that game where you flew around as robots? Uh... Madden 20, wow, that game sucked. Thanks, Adam. That's right. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Adam. Okay. Uh. <laughs> oh yeah. Remember uh, Battlefield. Marita, let's check it out. 
Jesus. <laughs> Battlefield V. Remember Battlefield V? That was my favorite Battlefield. Oh, it's Julia Hardy. I didn't even know. It's just going to get a bit weird and fighty up here. Um, well, Battlefield V. Okay. Hold on. Let me go to 2018. Where's the EA guy? There's a, the one I always impersonate is the the corporate overlord. Is this him? Over at the Xbox briefing tomorrow. That's not him. Xbox One. P.S. You want to just get right to it? Sure. I mean, we're not ready to show. Oh, Anthem. That's the game I was thinking of. I'm so hyped, you guys. Anthem. Yep, and that was, uh, guys, that was I'm so hyped for Anthem. This game is going to kill it. To Everybody's going to be playing it. It's going to be so fun. At, uh, Anthem. So <laughs> I can't. Everybody's playing when, Anthem still, right? This is, oh, man. When so do I get to play? Anthem. Yes. There's a shaker relic. Wait, something's odd. Get a closer look. What you? was the problem with Anthem? Wasn't it like See those radiant Was it just energy? buggy or did there just nobody play it or Is it just bad? <laughs> is this boring? Uh I'm going to be using a javelin for a long period of time. We really want you to be able to make it your own. I'm glad you brought that up because actually. Oh, here you. Okay, this is this is who I impersonate. Here he is. To create amazing entertainment, and what I can say about all of those teams, <laughs> and what I can say about us is that we are always trying to learn, and listen, and strive to be better. So this is the dude that's like the CEO. Is he a C? I think he's the CEO, right? Hold on. Control is power. <laughs> what the shit? For a new generation. <laughs> Now, before we close the show with a spectacular epic anthem, I wanted to share a few final things. Yep, Andrew Wilson, CEO. So he's just like, everybody, welcome to E3. We have some unbelievable presentations for you today. And then they pause for like the claps and it's like, now, what I'm about to show you feels unbelievable that in our current day and age, we have the capability to create such amazing works of art with amazing people behind the scenes. So, without further ado, here's people that make less money than me that I'm going to fire very soon. Woo! All right. I am blessed to be able to work with some of the most creative people on the planet. I can't, I can't go full British. I need to like, if I'm gonna go full British, I need to just, <laughs> what I, can say about all of those I need to harness and my, my powers. Is that we are always trying to learn and listen and strive to be better. And so, <laughs> as you look at the it's just experience. all buzzwords. Like what we're trying to do is believe in ourselves, work together, get me a golden parachute. So when the game crashes, I have a lot of money and can keep buying all my Rolexes that I'm wearing. That's really what it's all about. You're going to see today, and as you play games this week, there's some things we hope come through. First, that at the very core is choice. Is that you as choice. players get to choose how you play, what you play, when you play, and what devices you play on. Wow. That in making those choices, you feel you are treated fairly. That no one is... What does that even mean? When I make the choice of what I want to play on, I'm treated fairly? Like, I want to play on uh, Xbox. And they're like, Pff. oh man, treat this guy wrong. Treat, treat him bad. <laughs> like, what? Doesn't even make sense. Right? What did he just say? That in making those choices, you feel you are treated fairly. That no one is given an unfair advantage or disadvantage for how they choose to play. Well, it's, uh, it's impossible. <laughs> It's like if you play on a computer, a phone, or a console, you, everybody's got a fair choice. It's like you can't do that. It's like it's impossible to do that. And he knows it. It's just, it's jumbled. Yeah, it's nonsense word salad. There's like, no matter what you do, whether you're playing like this on your phone, or you're like on the controller, or you've got a mouse and keyboard, it's about just, and I guess if you're playing a game like Minions Mobile, 
on your PC, then maybe you have it all balanced. This dude does not play games. I'm going to tell you that right now. If he does, he plays like FIFA and that's it. Like, this is the guy where he's like, yeah, FIFA, you know, I do dabble in Call of Duty a little bit, but I got to get out to my yacht. <laughs> like, this dude does not play games. That for every moment that you invest, we know that you put so much of your life into the games we make, and that for every moment that you invest, you feel like you are rewarded and you are given value for that investment. And most importantly, that the games are fun, that we move past the grind. Wow. And that these are experiences fun games. that truly enhance your lives. <laughs> Look at that dead stare into the into the void. <laughs> We move past the grind, and that's why we've added in card loot boxes for all our Electronic Arts games so you don't have to grind. You can just give us money, <laughs> and you don't got to grind anymore. Just give us money, and then you can just you play the game. Look at that. <laughs> so he's not wrong. If you pay them money, you don't have to grind. You can have fun. And so as we think through all the things that we're trying to do, know that we want to be better and that we want to make great games. And that as much as we love making games and as much as you love playing them, there's something that is even greater that we can do together. What is the it? The power of this community when we come together to do amazing things is profound. What is Last it? Last weekend was the third year of our Play to Give program where we show the world how the power of play can be a positive force for social impact. Do you think he's given any of his own money? <laughs> Do you think he's taken a salary cut so he can be part of the play to give program? He's like, I've cut 10% of my salary to give to the play to give program because I care. He didn't do that shit. He's not playing the give. <laughs> he's playing the get. Millions of you out there participated in nine in-game challenges in our games, logging millions of hours in support of Play to Give. And to celebrate that, we contributed a total of $1 million to three charities that share our vision for a more inclusive world. Like, that's cool, but can I just say $1 million to EA is like absolutely nothing, and they probably just did it for tax breaks, because there's like tax breaks for like you ea if he was like 50 million dollars i'd be like oh shit nice but he's just like 1 million like i feel like that's <laughs> that's a, for a, a massive top 50 top 100 company in the world giving like a million dollars feels like they just gave like five bucks to a charity or something like we we play to give we've created this giant program and you know what five bucks <laughs> like it feels like that's the equivalent Meanwhile, this dude's probably, what's his name? Let's look him up. A world where representation yeah, CEO. and equality are not something we strive for. Andrew Wilson, net worth. And bullying and exclusion are not an everyday thread. These Folks, guess how much Andrew Wilson is worth? <laughs> According to whatever this website is, he is worth... Uh, actually, if we take the, uh, we got a couple here. He is worth anywhere from 170 million to 300 million dollars. <laughs> That's right. As the EA CEO, I'm so glad he was able to <laughs> do this program. What a guy. Uh, he is the chairman and CEO of Electronic Arts. So, uh, yeah, that's what a, what a great guy. I said, this is the guy I always said just looked like a vampire. Like it straight up looked like he woke up this morning in his coffin and was just like, but instead of sucking money, he just, or sucking blood, he sucks money. I already I got ahead of my joke. I will suck your money. Uh, yeah, this guy is, <laughs> He, this guy does not play video games. This is a super businessman. In fact, let's see. What did he do in his early career? In the dot-com boom of the late 1990s, Wilson lived in Sydney, Australia, built Australian websites for international corporations. He subsequently also helped raise venture capital and launch IPOs for dot-com startups. Now, this is a guy that loves gaming. <laughs> no doubt about it.
Uh, he does have a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So, I mean, that's kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay. The, let's see, after the dot com bubble, Wilson joined EA's small video game development studio on Australia's Gold Coast, which created V8, Supercar, Rugby, Cricket, and Surfing video games. That does seem like the games he would play. <laughs> uh, but needed someone with real experience in how sports were actually played. The studio closed. Wait, so did they bring in him because he had real experience in those things, which would also make sense? Uh, closed in 2002 due to lack of scale. Wilson then worked in the company's Asian and European markets for several years before going to EA Sports and becoming executive producer of the FIFA franchise. <laughs> dude, I called it. I was like, this dude probably just plays FIFA. And he became the executive producer on FIFA back in the early 2000s. In August 2011, he was appointed executive vice president of EA Sports and also took on duties as executive vice president of the company's origin platform in 2013. Six months after the resignation of John Ricitello, he was chosen as the new CEO of the company on 2013. And his first year, he incorporated a player-first corporate strategy and offered more free-to-play games and an in-app purchase option and moved towards transformation of physical software to digital and increased digital offerings and subscription-based digital services. <laughs> Cool. All right, I'm done watching that guy. Uh, he's a he's a business sportsman, sports businessman. Dude, I forgot all about the un. Dude, remember the unravel guy? That was nine years ago. Oh my god, get me out of here. Uh, okay. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome. Oh, that's pointless. Top ten. That's a great one. Honestly, YouTube. Yarny was nine years ago, dude. Nine years. Hold on, where was... <laughs> where did Jesse Cox laughs go? Uh, hold on, let me open another one here. I gotta, I gotta see Jesse Cox laughs. Here it is, Jesse Cox laughs. Ask oh, no. <laughs> what? Hey, I was in this one. I was in this one too. What? <laughs> Dude, I was in this one. Dude, I'm just saying, a lot of Jesse Cox laughs stem from me being there, right? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. A lot of the laughs stem from, yeah, I'm the source. <laughs> Why would it have been like Dude, Jess Cox is laughing at a dead guy. Really no a oh my god, the maid! <laughs> I forgot about the maid. <laughs> Did I mess something up? Literally. No, no, you didn't. <laughs> I forgot so funny. that the oh, Jesse no. Cox maid situation exactly. ever happened, where she just came in and started cleaning <laughs> oh, while he was nowhere. live. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Is that legit? Dude, that was 100% legit. That straight up happened. Like, she just... She just came in while he was live streaming on the, the thing. He was just dying. <laughs> does he talk about it? I don't even know if he does. Yeah, she just keeps coming back, like, cleaning the shelf. She didn't give a shit. I need a bit of grief time, Jesse. <laughs> Come back, Jesse. <laughs> they turn his webcam off. 40 minutes in. This is going to be a good one. Oh. Whoa. That was so good. Whoa. Out of the mouse. <laughs> Dude, I forgot I had the oh. mouse car. Oh my god, I'm working on it. Get outside. <laughs> what? 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 What the hell is this? It's bollocks! Oh, McPixel? I remember that now. We were on the same Sky Island. <laughs> oh, shit, the Mayans! <laughs> <laughs> that is something you'll never forget.
never here again. Ever. Oh, oh shit, the Mayans. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, the Mayans. <laughs> Dude, the Mayan game was so good. Just the fact that, like, you're just some random ass people on an island with Mayans. And they're just, like, the world's ending. Like, that was such a... That was such an experience. <laughs> All right, that's that's pretty good actually. That... Dude, this is like super early on. You can I tell just, TB's right, setup is right. like. Oh, I just want to say I have to bring this up. I don't even know what he just said. <laughs> Dude, I forgot about hot dog lady. Oh my god, I forgot all about hot dog lady. <laughs> That's why I remember to see that. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> she's enjoying it too. She's she just like, loves eating that hot dog. dog. She's just like, mm, hot dog. <laughs> she's like, mm, that, that is pretty good. Oh my god, I forgot all about hot dog lady, dude. Is good that is, <laughs> that's a nostalgia <laughs> trip right there. <laughs> She did uh, honestly well, the fact that she episode, she just drops down, it. Down, she just drops the hot dog. Down. Why would you put the hot dog down? <laughs> what? Wait. She just and dropped it's still it. like <laughs> hot dog. Eat the hot dog. Oh. oh, she landed in somewhere on the island. Now she's lost. Man, what a game, man. Saints Row is just Saints Row Two is an experience. <laughs> no. That, that's summoning ghosts. That's not the Disney Spider Also, this video is from 11 years ago, by the way. So these were all like relevant moments at the time. As it happens. I think you missed the fourth incantation just a little bit, but it was pretty damn close. We could have all died. Think about that next time you try and break into Disney. Oh, crap. What? He's cheating. <laughs> Dude, I don't know what. <laughs> what is he doing? All right, there's apparently funny moments here. Hold on. Oh, I see what you're doing. Oh yeah, he did the Family Guy. The Family Guy made thing. It was funny. <laughs> oh, it's a monster! Oh shit! <laughs> That's pretty good. What are they why why would you <laughs> Why why would you <laughs> I can't breathe? <laughs> oh my god. Man, good old Terraria. What? <laughs> Dude, I don't even know how McPixel worked. <laughs> oh my god, I remember this. <laughs> That's how you do that. What, wait, what? No! <laughs> wait, why did I get killed? <laughs> because you could have way worse reaction times than I do. That's true, he does have pretty bad reaction time. Why did I just die? Oh my god. What just happened? Someone, someone replay that. I thought for sure that was an instant TB death. Well, I gotta replay. Wait, what? No! <laughs> wait, why did I get excited? Wait, what? what? Wait, what? No! Dude, that actually is wait, pretty why impressive. Did I get How do you do that? What? Wait. Like he set the dynamite, right? And then he's. TB's right here. Jesse's waiting over here. What? And then it just explodes, but then... No! <laughs> TB makes it a... That's actually insane, dude. Now that we're, I'm looking back, analyzing this, this is like... This is wild. What? Wait, what? Because, like, here we go, frame by frame, what? right? That's, that's like, practically bugged out. <laughs> it's the John Madden... Co now you see right here, he's got the... He's moving right here. He's got the dynamite. He's going. He's going. Boom! Boom! 
right over the left, but then boom, he's not, he's not even getting hit by the dynamite. He's just moving over here, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't, know. I don't go get him. Just get him. No! Wait, Honestly, that's pretty impressive. It's almost like because he was moving or something. It didn't hit him. You good that's what insane. Just happened? That was an instant TV death. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's some good Jesse Cox laughing. Alright. <laughs> this video came out, the update that removed friendly fire from explosive was live, unlike other Oh. <laughs> that's uh that's honestly pretty pretty impressive. I maybe he didn't even know. Alright, let's see. Wait, one hour of classic WoW Alpha. Hold on, I kind of want to see this. One hour of classic WoW Alpha 2003. All right, let's see some classic WoW Alpha. Yo, what the? <laughs> oh my. Okay. Man, this is this is this is a little rough around the edges. This is very text heavy. Oh, look at that gnome! <laughs> look at that gnome, dude. I wish you could have a mustache like that now. They ruined the game. This is the moment World of Warcraft died when they took that mustache out. These are, these are these are some characters, all right. What? Okay, why why does this troll look like the most just like degenerate troll? Like they got the creepy smile. They've got the most wide stance I think I've ever seen. Like they look. <laughs> That is, I don't, I don't even know. They're just like. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my ass is on backwards for the seven months. I'm hardly around to watch these days, but F it sub time. Dude, hell yeah. Thank you for subbing and wasting your money here. One, two, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> Swing. Okay, here we are in good old Elwyn Forest. Whoa, that is a big... Wait, a summoning stone? Why is there a summoning stone there? Is it just like... It's kind of weird. That looks like the maps that show up. What the? Dude, that's crazy. I guess it would just be for like alpha only, yeah. I love how scuffed everything is. Like, this is so cool. And then, like, even if you're playing the game, that text looks really small. <sighs> oh, yeah, Eastern Kingdoms was called Azeroth. That's actually pretty funny. Thank you, Eric, who, for the three months. One, two, three. It's like... Thank you very much. Let's see, what else we got? What is, oh my God, I forgot they used to have that. Where you had to learn like every single thing. That's some, that's some 2003 alpha casting animations. All right. That's the gliding. Dude, to be fair, this bug persisted for like numerous years. Let's see, they got anything crazy happening on level ups. Lord Qued now at the Twitch Prime. Thank you, Lord Qued now. What? For the Twitch Prime. What is. What is that dancing here? <laughs> They're doing like an Irish jig or something. Like, yo, did I want to die? I want to die? We got here. Oh, man. They need to bring this guy back. Thanks. What is that? That's like, this is straight up like a Warcraft 3 model. Like, I think they just ripped that from Warcraft 3. 
<gasps> Stranglethorn! Booty Bay! Cannon's still going strong, kinda. Thanks. That is... Yo, we got a golden Kappa train, mama mia. Honestly, this, lo this looks pretty similar. That's not similar. <laughs> I, ha I remember seeing this from, um, what do you call it? Like videos and stuff, like the Statue of Liberty being all glitched out. <laughs> yeah. Stranglethorn, oh yeah, I was down there. There's the ogre, again, the ogres look like they're straight up ripped from uh, Warcraft 3 as well. Oh. <laughs> Basil is struggling a little bit out here. Just straight up green glob they look like uh flubber remember flubber kind of look like that what the oh yeah the boxes Thanks. with the guy's head on it wait where is this is this like the sub island cut player housing this Thanks. was player housing there it is 2003 player housing. I mean, surely they'll add that to the. You know what? I, I see why they cut it from the alpha. It looks like it needs some work. Surely that'll be that'll be coming in a couple years, right? Maybe like five years, ten years, fifteen, twenty. Maybe like twenty years from now, that'll be that'll be happening, right? Look at that. You got a little uh, <laughs> you got a little thing there. Hey. I mean, you could, honestly, they could have just kept player housing underwater. People would still probably be happy. Look at that. They, you could just have, like, houses upon houses. Look at that. That's crazy. Wait, where is this? This is Iron Forge? That's pretty neat. It looks like a steampunk forge, if anything. Although that kind of looks the same. see here we got uh yo wait was there another level there's like three levels right that looks like a third level unless it just is messing with my perception there's like i think it's like a half level and yeah, there it is the great forge <laughs> Dude, that looks so much shittier. <laughs> I'm glad they changed it. Got the Dwarven Library. Yo, this kind of this kind of looks like Ulduar a little bit. Is this the tram? Maybe that's where they got Ulduar. Uh, uh, what do you call it? motivation or inspiration from? This old ass Iron Forge place. Oh yeah, they had the Forge. Mod. I remember this was the place everybody used to blink through to get to right if you were a mage you'd like go to the door and like blink and you can go down to old iron forge and see all this i remember that and then there'd be some like old ass youtube videos they're all grainy being like and people like warping through with their 480p <laughs> and this kind of looked like molten core they probably got the molten core inspiration from that sarah darrow Wait, where is Ser Darrow? Oh, is that like Playlands? Oh, yeah, it's... Oh, it's where Skolomance is. Uh, also, thank you, Chris, for the five gifted subs. Zergling, Flag Hobo, Flag Phantom Fun, Flag Albs, Flag and Fuzzy Spud Kiss. Flag... <laughs> All getting subs. Thank you, Chris, for contributing to the Golden Cap a train. Miss Mayday Hunter Bits, Snedge Hunter Bits. Chris gifting a sub to Couch Lasagna. Flag... A JG with the 13 months. Crendor in daylight. That's me. One, two, five, six, seven, eight, 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 13. It's like Zix with the five gifted subs. Thank you, Zix. Dusk Rose Creations. It's like that one pin, one inch pinch. It's like the Madman. It's like Hexy. It's like and Vintage Z. It's like 
Thank you, Zix, for the five gifted subs. I wonder if they just... Did they just put the portal here to, like... Uh, give it a place to go to? Or, like, was it actually supposed to be there? I don't even know. Is there, like, lore behind it where it was supposed to be in Serdaro or whatever it's called? There's Karazhan! I forgot that Karazhan was in the original version. I think it was supposed to be, like, a raid or a dungeon. That's actually pretty sick. Even if it's <laughs> way up in the mountains. In the mountains. Dude, Deadwind Pass looks sick. <laughs> like, uh, Dark Portals were dungeon area placeholder. Oh, I see. Offworld with the 11 months. Thank you, Offworld. Well, that's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It's like, thank you for the 11 months. Like, look at that. That looks so cool. I guess maybe because you're, like, on top of Deadwind Pass. I guess. So you're kind of looking down. Ah, ah. Wait, what is this? Is this on top of Karazhan? Oh, yeah. That's pretty neat. Just running around up here. It's whatever. Oh, I guess they don't die. They probably got the GM tool or whatever. Golden Kappa trains down to 20 seconds. Get your Golden Kappas before it's gone. Hyper Hedgehog with the 500 bits. Thank you, Hyper Hedgehog, for the 500 bits. Let's see. All right, enough of Karazhan. What is this? Cut Hygel statue? I guess it's just a big tree. Although that is Hygel. <laughs> I forgot Hygel was in the game and then they cut it out. I, dude, it's funny because whenever I think of Mount Hygel, like still to this day, I think of going to the Hygel entrance and there being like the do not pass construction zone sign being there. <laughs> uh, there he is, big tree. Underwater dark portal. That's pretty sick. Wait, what dungeon was this for? Underwater Dark Portal? Is this a placeholder for... Something? Like an Ashara dungeon? The Goblin Observatory. Oh, I remember uh, looking up this for a pointless top 10. There are the Golden Kappas. On map dungeon. I was fun. I love seeing places like this, like the places that could have been in the game but didn't make it. Wait, what is this? Glidgem's Isle? Is this supposed to be like a Pandaria building? Because isn't there the uh, that one Pandaren guy that rode the turtle and then that was Pandaria? Is that what that's supposed to be? Oh, Gilligan's Isle Joe? Okay. I guess that makes more sense. Goblin War Tour. Oh, okay. Wait, where is this in Stranglethorn? Is this like the entrance? I guess there's like nothing there yet. Oh yeah, there's the waterfall. <laughs> the <ra> <laughs> Dude, why isn't this guy in the game still? The random guy with his big wagon of wheat that isn't even the character. You can't click on him. They should bring him back, honestly. I think that would save the game. What we got over here. Okay, this looks like normal Stranglethorn. Okay. It's a broken... Dude, that's actually pretty cool. Having a broken bridge you can't cross with the water under it. Should bring that back. <laughs> uh, let's see, you got some... No, wait, what is this? So you'd like climb up here? And then there's like different platforms to go up into the trees? That's actually pretty cool. I like that. That's pretty neat. 
They've got that in like more modern stuff, but or more modern versions of the game. That would've been cool in classic WoW. Okay, there's more turtles on the beach. Okay, turtles on the beach, coral. Coral. Oh, maybe all this is like underwater now. I think that's where the murloc stuff is, isn't it? Another <laughs> random guy. Boom, 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 boom. There's a cave. Wait, this is all on Gilligan's Isle? I didn't even realize that. That's a pretty standard looking cave. Nothing crazy. Okay. What else is here? Turkey cooking. That's still in the game. That's some docks. Okay, this is all pretty standard stuff. South Seas. Oh, we're back on normal Stranglethorn. There's the Crash Zeppelin. Okay. Blasted Lands. All right, let's see how Blasted Lands is. There they go. They're going, they're going to Burning Crusade. Here it comes. And there they go. <laughs> They're in Outland. Woo! And here's that other place. I think it was for the Warlock quest. This is where you had to go to get the Warlock mount, if I remember. What is this? Just a building? Ooh. Where the hell? <laughs> where the hell is the blasted land? What? <gasps> That's some buggy alpha stuff. Now we got Cut Orc Outpost. Ruined Orc Great Hall. Ah, okay. Okay, it's an Orc Outpost. Where's this now? Burning Steps. Burning Steps was always kind of boring. I never really liked the Burning Steps, to be honest. It was cool to look at the... Blackrock Mountain from and be like, whoa, it's Blackrock Mountain and everything else there. I was like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, these guys, it gave me very like Mordor Lord of the Rings vibes. Altar of Storms, which is probably what they got inspired by. There's good old Borgus stout arm. <laughs> good old Borgus. I don't think you're supposed to like the burning steps. I mean, you can still like it. Like, it's fun to go there and quest or, like, do stuff. I don't know. Unlike the Maw. <laughs> like, you're not supposed to like the Maw either, but it's supposed to still be enjoyable to go there and do stuff. Because otherwise, it's like, hey, guys, we designed this part of the game that it's really bad, and you're not supposed to like it, and it's not fun. And it's like, oh, okay, I'm not going to play that. <laughs> Island of Dr. Lapidus? Lapidus? Yeah, it's like, it's literal hell. You can't have fun here. It's like, okay, well, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna play this. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, shit. Yeah, he's right. We need people to play the game. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like a zone you traveled through. That's true. Yeah, modern burning steps, I think, is, is, is better. This is... Rem, this reminds me of the northeastern Stranglethorn. There's, like, all these buildings there. Maybe that's what this is supposed to be. Maybe they moved all of it to northeast Stranglethorn. This looks very similar, and I think there's, like, some weird dis poison disease thing there with some alchemist guy. I think. <laughs> I objectively enjoyed Shadowlands. I feel alone. I mean, I didn't... The thing is, I enjoyed a lot of the zones in Shadowlands that weren't the Maw. <laughs> like, I enjoyed Shadowlands for, a, like, a bit. I just really didn't like the end game or, like, a lot of the mechanics and stuff. Like, I didn't like uh, Torghast. I didn't like the Maw. I didn't like the... The renown system you had to do on every single character. I didn't like the jailer and the lore. 
<laughs> but aside from that, I liked everything else. It's not those primary focuses of the expansion. <laughs> Yo, they got the oil rig out here. It's pretty neat. Let's see what else we get. Big pink thing. Tower, that's pretty standard tower. This just gives me PTSD because this is when I played classic hardcore and then that boar guy died. It was me and that, uh, or the, the orc with the boar. It was the orc, what was his name? And then his his pet scorpion was named like pork nutballs or something. <laughs> I can't remember his name. Oh, I think it was Shrek. It was Shrek. I mean, it was Shrek something. It was either Shrek or Shrek something. <laughs> And I remember watching him die, and that was like the most, like, post-traumatic. Or yeah, it was Shrek Balls. That's what his name was, Shrek Balls. And then his pet was like, pork nuts or some shit like that. I don't know. That was a traumatic experience. Um, that's a cool hut. No, right. That's, it was Shrek Roids. All right, now, there it is. Shrek Roids and pork nut balls. Okay. Pretty cool. Uh, that's a cool water thing. Okay, it's all just kind of the same. There's an anchor. Nothing really crazy here. What is this? Well, that's like where the pirates are. Yo, Undercity. All right, here we go. Okay, they didn't die to the elevator. Not authentic. Honestly, it looks about the same. Well, some stuff is a little wonky, but it's the Alpha. Yeah, this is Alpha 2003 footage. From, uh, the Alternative Gaming Channel four years ago. Which, this is like such high quality footage. I'm surprised they, they got this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, what is the where is this? I don't remember this being the game. This must be an alpha thing. You go up here and then you go through here. And there's a bridge. Am I crazy? This isn't in the game, right? Then there's like an upstairs? There's no, this is not in the game. There's no way. I do not remember this at all. Then you're like up top. Rogues have a quest here in Legion? Ah, oh, okay, so that makes sense. They probably like brought it back for nostalgia purposes or something. God, I hope they revamp the Blood Elf zones and everything. It needs it so bad. I hate go. It's because, like, nobody wants to go to the Blood Elf areas. You can't even fly there. They're difficult to get to. <laughs> like, you may as well just not even have them. <laughs> and they're extremely dated. Oh, yeah, this is a cool area. Got all the weapons. Swimming through the goop. That's all the same. That's all the same. Wait, what is this? A guard? Reginald Grimsford just chilling in the water, having a great time. Yo, what is this? Winter Spring? <laughs> this is Winter Spring? Okay, this is this is blowing my mind. This is like, uh, it's like Greenland or whatever. Or which one? Greenland is actually snowy and then Iceland is really green. I guess this is, yeah, it's more spring than winter right now. <laughs> I guess it's just a bunch of stuff they haven't worked on except for the mountainous parts. Like they created the mountains, they still have to do all the snow and all the... 
buildings and everything. That's pretty wild, seeing it in, like, a bare-bones state. Oh, there's some. <laughs> here's the, here's winter spring. There it is. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> Over here. There's trees? Wait, where is that? Where are there big trees? That... By Moonglade or something? I don't even know. That might just be nothing, and they just put them there for no reason. Or is it Fellwood? Oh, maybe it's Fellwood. Oh, yeah, it could be Hygel. I forgot Hygel actually uh, existed in this version. <laughs> it's probably Hygel. It's, like, right next to it. There's more winter spring trees. That's the rock. Oh, this is probably the uh, the area with all the cubs, the frost saber cubs. That makes sense. And then here's bears having fun. A little out of their environment, you know? They got nothing to eat except green whatever the ground is. <laughs> uh... Encourage Alpha? Okay, this is interesting, because Encourage and, like, Silithus was already unfinished when the game launched. I like how this is more finished than Winter Spring, actually. It's just, like, it's not green. You got the big blocks of stone. A lot of blocks. A lot of blocks. Even even when Silithus was finished, nobody won. It's <laughs> up here. Okay. Oh yeah, this looks like the actual Encourage dungeon area. I remember all this. The bugs. All the bug tunnels. This looks like the standard bug tunnels. I remember these. I remember. Go back out. Man, I need to finish leveling my classic hardcore guy. This makes me want to go back and finish leveling him. Well, not dying. I don't want to die. <laughs> so I'm like level 48 or something. 47, 48. I got full rest XP. I can do that. Okay, more bug caves. A lot of bug caves. Whoa! Little underground. Now, where are we? Strat home. Okay. <laughs> That's Strat home, all right. Is this, uh, I think this is Undead Strat Home. I think this looks more like the Undead one. If I remember. What the hell is that thing? I don't even know. Well, maybe it's live Strat Home. Nah, I think it's Undead. And here's the. <laughs> The gate, oh, the gate becomes a thing. Oh, yeah, and then you're in the Eastern Plague Lands. Look at that. You just walk out into the Eastern Plague Lands. There it is on the, on the map of Azeroth. <laughs> Unfinished temple? What the heck? What is this supposed to be? Is this like... Zulgarub or uh, the on, uh, uh, not Ankaraj, the Swamp of Sorrows Temple. It's probably ZG, yeah. I think this is like Stranglethorn. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's supposed to be Zulgarub. That's it. 
Yo, that was pretty sick. That was legit, like... Oh, what's that temple look like again? I kind of want to see from the outside. That was really cool seeing all that. I guess it's not really a temple. It's just stairs leading up. I guess the modern one is much cooler. That was great. All right, let's see. What else we got here? <laughs> Uh, all right. I want to see Waffle House food training safety. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> wow. Look at those cornerstones of safety, such as <laughs> washing your hands. Using gloves, pouring bleach into a container, putting garbage into the trash, and writing the time down on a sticker. You gotta, you gotta slow down. This is way too advanced. <laughs> Food safety is an important part of a great customer experience. Hi, I'm Brian Literal. Hey, Brian. And I'm Carl Smith, and we want to welcome you to the four cornerstones of food safety. Did you Turn know this over up. nine million people a year are sickened by the foodborne illness? Granted, most of those only experience Wait, a what? night of discomfort by foodborne illness. Did he just Granted, say? Did you know over 9 million people a year are sickened by the foodborne illness? What food? Just the foodborne illness. <laughs> did you know that 9 million people are sickened by the foodborne illness? It's like, which one? <laughs> just all of them? Just there, they lumped them all together under the, it's like the Ohio State University. Granted, the foodborne illness. A night of discomfort. <laughs> but as many as 55,000 people every year require hospitalization because of foodborne illness. Ah, and over 1,000 people die each year. Yeah. To protect the Waffle House brand, to help ensure that our customers have a great Waffle House experience. Why, and <laughs> Why is he looking at him like that? He's just like, he's reading the teleprompter and he's just looking at him like. <laughs> like he's concerned or something. Because it's the right thing to do. We take food safety very seriously. In this video, we will look at how food becomes unsafe, your role in keeping food safe, and how, as a team, we can all ensure our customers always have safe food. Just like a house has a foundation with four corners, our Waffle House way of service and production is also built on the four corners wow. of food safety. It's also like with a personal house. personal hygiene, controlling time and temperature. I thought he was about to be like, Waffle House is built also on a sanitizer. foundation. We've divided this video into sections covering each of these foundations of okay. food safety. Okay. Before we start, let's identify three hazards to food. Okay. One, biological hazards such there as bacteria, they are. viruses, parasites, and fungi. <laughs> Two, Yo, fun guy. chemical hazards such as cleaning products, pesticides, and certain toxic metals. Yeah. And finally, three, physical hazards, objects that can fall into food making it unsafe like yep. glass, broken toothpicks, Metal shavings, dirt, band-aids. The classic band-aids in your food. Working carefully with chemicals and staying vigilant for foreign objects getting into the food are important behaviors and manageable. On the other hand, much of what's covered in our four cornerstones of food safety will deal with controlling biological hazards. Okay. Because they are odorless, tasteless, and microscopic, we have to practice very specific behaviors, as you will see oh, yeah. in this video. Okay, let's get started. Let's do it. Gloves. Love gloves. People in poor hygiene are the number one cause of foodborne illness. If our associates don't practice good <laughs> personal hygiene, they risk transferring pathogens from their bodies to customers' food. Hand washing, avoiding Dude just straight up sneezed on it in front of them. Wearing clean uniforms, keeping fingernails natural, short, and unpolished, not wearing jewelry while handling food, using proper hair restraints and only eating, drinking, smoking, chewing gum, or tobacco in designated areas are ways to ensure... Yeah, there's nothing like a first date at the old Waffle House. Okay, let's watch while one of our associates describes the proper way to wash our hands. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go over how to properly wash our hands. Yes. First thing we want to do when we approach the sink is get a good base layer of water on our hands and Good arms. base layer of water. Go all the way up to our elbows here. Good base layer. Once we do that, we're going to take some soap, all right. put a mountain there, and we're going to lather up vigorously. Again, all the way good up. Good amount of soap. Lather up. Vigorous latherization. Once we're good with the soap, we're going to go back to the water. Total time, maybe 20 seconds for the whole process. Whoa, 20 the seconds? The way to judge this, that you're doing it correctly, 
simply sing the ABCs or the birthday song to yourself. Dude, he's got it. He's ahead of his time. Now, once we're done with the rinse, last step is we're going to dry our hands and arms. Take a disposable paper towel and fully dry your hands and arms. <laughs> Stop mid forearm all the way up to your elbows. Good to go. <laughs> Vigorously dry Finish them. Drying your hands, be sure to use the disposable paper towel to turn off the faucet. If you don't, you risk recontamination. There's absolutely no way a Waffle House employee does this every time. And then discard. I would bet so much money that they do not use a paper towel to turn off the faucet. Handling raw meat and then handling ready-to-eat food. After taking out the trash, after touching your hair or face, after sneezing, coughing, or using a tissue, after handling chemicals, after busing tables, after handling money, after eating, drinking, or smoking, after chewing gum or tobacco. What percentage do you think do this? After putting on gloves. And after what percentage of employees do you think follow these rules? I know. I it's would say list. we want to keep two percent safe, and that starts with hand washing. Like hand every washing one of them, so I'd say there's like twenty twenty sure percent do like some hand washing. Times. And remember, never place dishes, towels, prep food, or anything else in the hand sinks. Hand sinks are for washing hands only. Finally, hand sinks, if a washing sink in hands. Does not have a hand washing sign posted Got it. over it, or that sign is worn out. Have your manager order one from Custom Graphics. Most states require food handlers to avoid bare hand contact with ready-to-eat foods. Once again, here's an associate to talk to us about the proper yes. way to wear gloves. So now that we've washed our hands properly, we're prepared to work with ready-to-eat food. Wait. So we're going to approach the sandwich board. <laughs> Wait, hold on. To talk to us about oh, I thought this guy was to just talking to us. I was like, wait, so did he just say, here's so an associate that, that talked to us, and then it went right to him? I was like, what? <laughs> Maybe, I think it just was talking to the two main dudes. Okay. Wash our hands properly. We're prepared to work with ready-to-eat food. So we're going to approach the sandwich board. We'll find our box of disposable gloves. And we're going to take out a new pair of single-use gloves. Go ahead, slip them on. All right. Gloves. Now we're ready to go with ready to eat food. Ready to go with ready to eat food. Gloves can help prevent Whoa. the spread of pathogens, but only if we use them correctly. Only use approved <laughs> Slip them on vigorously. gloves when handling food. Make sure they fit your hands. Never rinse, wash, or reuse gloves. Wash your hands before and after using gloves. Got it. Change them when they become dirty or torn. Change them before beginning a different task. Change them after handling raw food and before handling ready-to-eat food, and change them at least every four hours if they're in continuous use. Wait, hold on. So you have to change them when they become dirty or torn. Okay. Change them before a different test. Change them after handling raw food before handling RT food, and at least every four hours. Of, like, continuous use? I feel like that is... How long are you using gloves for if you have them on for four hours? And I feel like you're going to be doing numerous things. Uh... <laughs> In a two- or three-person grill, it's easy to manage glove use. The meat Thanks. and egg grill operator can cook barehanded because they will only handle raw food. But keep in mind the customer's perception that all grill operators should be wearing gloves. The marker grill operator always cooks with gloves on because they will only handle ready-to-eat food. The meat and egg grill operator who grabs the egg pan handle has contaminated the handle. <sighs> if the marker grill operator touches that handle with his gloved hand, his gloves become cross-contaminated. It's all over. And everything else he touches with those gloves, like toast, waffles, lettuce, tomatoes, or even condiments for marking plates, become cross-contaminated too. Yep, it's if all over. If gloves become cross-contaminated, immediately remove the gloves, wash your hands, and put on a new pair of gloves. Wearing gloves correctly is more challenging when a grill operator is working by themselves. Uh, when it yeah. comes to glove use, grill operators are not alone. Salespeople need to work together and help the grill operator. Salespeople should not shock She just handled so bacon. The grill operator can effectively use the pull. Oh, the hand system. wash. There it is. Salespeople need to wait a little longer so a single grill operator can transition from bare hands to gloves. Always use the hash brown cup and only grab it by the handle. Don't let your hand come into contact with the hash browns and don't let the wait, cup the hash brown cup. The hash browns. Work just looks like cheese. The so they just pour like hash browns into a little circle thing. When it comes to avoiding bare hand contact with ready to eat food. Waffle House salespeople are also food handlers and perform many other tasks that bring them into contact with ready to eat food. Like this associate, who we see building the base for a grilled chicken salad while using gloves. 
What? We've been talking about good personal hygiene, nice. hand He's washing, those and proper glove use. Now, let's review a few other items. All right. Remember, associate beverages consumed in a food prep area can only be in a single-use disposable cup with a lid and straw. All areas of the back room, including the manager's office, is considered a food, food prep, prep area, area by the health department. For that reason, associate meals should be eaten at the low counter and not in the back room. Food codes required all nice. food handlers the, to have the their low hair counter. restrained. For women <laughs> who prefer the Waffle House headscarf or for those who prefer the visor, a hairnet must be worn underneath. Dude, and I'd have to wear a hair in that. alternative is the Waffle House ball cap. Remember that all loose hair, including ponytails and bangs, or I could wear the ball cap, the I guess. Men with short hair. Employees sit at the, the kids' table to eat. <laughs> Check with your local health inspector if you have any questions about I would definitely not wear the Waffle the House, like, <laughs> whatever that hat house. was. If you work when you're sick, you could contaminate food. The norovirus, in particular, is responsible for more foodborne illness outbreaks than any He's going to sneeze again. Oh, reused clip. Exclusion restriction policy says. Thank you, D. Brazzers, five months. Yo. Inform <laughs> management when they have these symptoms. It's like vomiting. They're the diarrhea, five months. Sore throat with fever. Jaundice? Or jaundice. Management responsibility. There's like, yeah, vomiting, diarrhea, sore throat, fever, jaundice? Like, what the fuck? Four hours. <laughs> How are you, uh, what do you got? You're getting jaundice. Are you like, uh, have you been drinking for the past, like, month every day, nonstop? They have been diagnosed with, or if in the last 30 days they have been exposed to, any of the following foodborne illnesses. I guess it is a, they do work at Waffle House. You might have to drink to work at Waffle House. E. coli, salmonella typhi, or non-typhoidal salmonella. Every Waffle House restaurant should have the exclusion restriction policy in the appendix of the Waffle House way, located in the back of the CNT binder. Contact Custom Graphics if you're <laughs> If you have heart that. failure, don't come in the work. One of the best tools you have to manage the entire food safety agenda is the food safety baton, which is done during each shift. The baton? Here on the shift change checklist are reminders about personal hygiene. No ill associates, clean uniforms, appropriate fingernails and jewelry, hair properly restrained, gloves available, and hand sinks cleaned and stocked. Okay. So that's it for the first cornerstone of food safety. Remember, nice. people and poor personal hygiene are the number one cause of foodborne illness. When we practice good personal hygiene, we're taking the first step in delivering safe food. Unreal. Who would have guessed it? Controlling time and temp. Oh boy, here we go. Now I want to talk to you about the second foundation of food safety, controlling time and temperature. Any type of food can be contaminated by pathogens. Are they going to pay me for 30 days I take off for ex <laughs> No, they're not going to do that. Waffle House, those foods include <laughs> dairy products, eggs, meat, chicken, grits, chili, gravy, and cut tomatoes. All right. To keep these foods safe, we have to limit the amount of time they remain in the temperature danger zone. Danger zone. The danger zone is from 41 degrees to 135 degrees. Yeah. This means we must hold cold food at 41 degrees or colder and hot food at 135 degrees or hotter. Yeah. When the temperature of the food <laughs> I just love how he slides in. Like, range, the food only has four hours during <laughs> which it is still safe to use. After four hours, that food must be thrown out. We have two tools that you need to use to ensure your hot and cold holding okay. temperatures are Okay, a correct. thermometer a that checks out. A calibrated thermometer and the line check found on the food safety baton. Okay. Let's watch as an associate demonstrates the correct steps to calibrate a thermometer. All right, here we go. Fill a glass with ice. Add water. Insert the thermometer probe into the ice water. Stir it around for a few seconds. Give it about 30 seconds. If it comes to rest on 32 degrees, you're good to go. If not, it would need to be adjusted according to the instructions provided. Honestly, that's pretty cool. I don't know. That's how you calibrate a thermometer. Now that you're sure the thermometer is reading accurately, you're ready to use the line check on the food safety baton to check the hot and cold holding temperatures around the restaurant. The unit manager or person in charge needs to confirm the temperature of our hot held foods every three hours according to this schedule. Okay. At the same time, Check the temperatures in all the refrigerators, including the walk-in, when possible. Temperatures are also very important when cooking meats. Yes. The correct internal cooking temperature for Waffle House foods are 145 degrees for eggs, 155 degrees for steaks, 
pork chops. 155 on a steak? <laughs> oh, boy. Degrees <laughs> Maybe if you wanted rubber. Well, normally, steaks and pork chops should be cooked to 145 degrees. The but shit. Waffle House steaks and pork chops are injected, and all injected meats need to be cooked to an internal temperature of 155 degrees. As far as our eggs go, <laughs> those eggs got legs. Called time as a public health control. Here's how it works. Remember to pull eggs. Oh, so yeah. How do you and prep them temperature first, check an egg? Like stick it in the. In the, cold the I don't even know. The best practice. Wait, is injected to steak? In the refrigerator. Did I miss something? A couple of them. Get them out the same way you get meats. Only when volume picks up, and you absolutely need those eggs above the grill, should you put the basket on the plate shelf. Notice the grill operators marked oh, yeah, the egg time, time. the eggs came out. And the time four hours later that the eggs still left out in the basket have to be discarded. All right. Once again, this procedure is called time as a public health control. We have a written policy that describes this, and your health inspector may <laughs> ask to see it. It, it looks like he's being held at gunpoint reading this. In the CNT binder. There are two more things I want to talk about as far as time and temperature are concerned. Oh, they're Birch injected chili, meats. They have to cook to 155. We cool Burt's chili. Using Interesting. A called two stage I don't know if I like that. <laughs> Let the chili Granted, cool I don't think I'm ever going to get a steak at a Waffle House. Granted, I've only been to a Waffle ice House ice once, and it was a terrible experience. Bring the Bay Maria freshly prepared chili to your prep sink. Make sure to put the stopper in the drain. Fill the sink with ice. What year is this? To near uh, the top of the Bay Marie. Put the lid does on, not say. Leave it ajar. This will let the steam out. And help the chili cool faster. Oh, it's since 2009. When you're in 2009. The room, remember to give it a stir to help it along. These procedures will ensure that the chili. What's terrible about it? Well, I said I'd like a waffle, please, and they were out of waffles. And I was like, this is. They're out of waffles at the Waffle House. Take the chili to the walk-in cooler, where four hours later, it will be at the required 41 degrees or colder. Never take a hot bay Maria of burst chili directly into the cooler. Hot. Wait, take if a hot do, bain marie. That, that thing's called a hot bain a bain marie. Not be below 41 degrees. Finally, let's talk date marking. We date mark all of our potentially I am hazardous bain marie refrigerated foods. Wow, it is called a bain marie. I didn't long. know that. This applies to commercially prepared foods like pies huh. or food we prepare in house, like burst chili and gravy. We will use this sticker for the date marking. On second shift. The prep grill operator or salesperson should label the name of the product, the date it was prepped. <laughs> Why do they have like the date, most? Which is the prep date plus six days. Like the kids font. This is like a font they use in like backyard baseball or something. Like we can't buy. It's all like scribbled in crayon. <laughs> that information to be written on the date mark. <laughs> well, those are the nuts and bolts of time and temperature. As those control. are the nuts. <laughs> but don't forget the food. Now those are the problem. nuts. The shift change checklist has time and temperature reminders. In addition, the baton has good information about internal cooking temperatures and the line checks. Okay. Food safety, cross-contamination. Welcome to the third cornerstone of food safety, preventing cross-contamination. Preventing cross-contamination involves how we store food, utensils, and equipment, as well as how we serve food. Okay. Let's start by looking at how we store food. Wrap or cover food before storing it. Store food only in containers intended for food and only in designated food storage areas and never near chemicals. Store food away from the walls and at least six inches off the floor. Always, and I mean always, store ready to eat food above raw okay, meat always. and poultry. When you have to stack the similar foods vertically in a refrigerator because of space limitations, there is a strict top-to-bottom stacking order. Oh, here we go. Order of operations. We put ready-to-eat foods on top. Below that, whole meats like bacon and country ham. Then ground meats and injected meats like our steaks and pork chops. Finally, chicken goes on the bottom. Chicken on you the can bottom. see how this unit manager has correctly stacked food in his walk-in cooler. When Beautiful. It comes to eggs, it's Beautiful best to stack stacking them by job. themselves or on the same shelf as whole meats. A six inch separation will work in areas where there is limited shelf space. Now, what we've described applies to the walk in cooler or out on the grill line. When it comes to utensils, here we go always utensils. Store, them with the handles up. store cups and glasses upside down on a clean and sanitized surface. Okay. Grill tools should be kept in clean and sanitized tool drawers, and when you grab one, always grab it by the handle. Gotcha. 
Now, let's talk about preventing cross-contamination while serving food. Yes, let's do it. If you're not careful, you can contaminate food contact surfaces while handling them. That, in turn, can contaminate the food you serve. When carrying plates, do not touch the part of the plates that come into contact <sighs> with the food. Instead, oh, man. rest your thumb under the edge Nobody's the doing plate. that. Nobody's the doing that. beverages. Never carry the glasses or cups by the plate. <laughs> Instead, always carry glasses <laughs> by the middle and cups by their handles. <laughs> you imagine your waiter we'll brings it up like, eh. Yeah. Set them up within <laughs> 60 seconds. Always be right. sure that you only <laughs> the, old, the old claw hand the technique. When you get ice, always use the ice scoop. Keep the ice scoop outside the ice when not in use. No matter what, never dip a glass directly into the ice bin. Oh, man. Your food safety baton has a reminder about correct stacking. Gave me the chills just seeing so that. Be sure to use this great tool every day. That's it for the third cornerstone of food safety. I hope you now understand the fundamentals of preventing cross contamination. Cleaning and sanitizing. Now Perfect like stream to, to hit my big one zero. Here's another hundred months of high quality non content. Cleaning Thank you, Lancer Eagle. One hundred months. But this table isn't ready yet to seat the next customers. It has to be sanitized. Sanitizing reduces the microorganisms on the surface to safe levels. It removes the things you can't see. And while you're at it, don't forget to clean and sanitize the menu mats. What? The most important reason to clean and sanitize is to prevent Thank you, Lancer Eagles. to food. Woo. And it also helps to control pests like insects and rodents. All surfaces need to be kept clean, but surfaces that come in contact with food need to be I just love the way he says sanitize. He's like sanitize. He just said it. And Hold on. Food need to be cleaned and sanitized. Sanitize. Tables and countertops. <laughs> Now, there are two ways to sanitize, and we <laughs> use them both at Waffle House. Sanitize. Houses. One is with heat, and the other is with chemicals. Our dish machines use heat sanitizing, and that's why it's important to check your rinse sanitize gauge often to ensure it's reaching 180 degrees. All right. 179 degrees is not good enough. Oh, man. You have to reach 180 degrees to ensure that you're killing the microorganisms. The other way to sanitize is with chemicals. At Waffle House, we Good use old chemicals. Chlorine. The best thing to do is to have a dedicated one-gallon container designated for sanitizing solution. Designated chlorine. Fill it full with cold tap water. Now add half of a. Now Waffle dip House your steaks in the chlorine to kill all the Close chemicals. The lid and give it a shake. To be sure you got it right, tear off a chlorine test strip from your test. The <laughs> Waffle and House, we use chlorine. That should, the that's it. The color chart. We don't need to hear anything sure else. You're at 100 parts per million. We need to check the chlorine solution at least the every slide three in again. hours. If it's not at 100 parts per million, it needs to be replaced. Remember, too strong. Yeah, why is he using gloves? Too weak. Didn't we just talk Never about glove use? The chlorine solution out front directly in the three insert pans. It takes too long and it's too hard to get it mixed right. Always mix in the designated jug in the back room. The way we clean food contact surfaces <laughs> at Waffle House is with a method called the two towel system. Yeah, the two towel system. When you approach a table or counter, bring both towels with you. One wet soapy towel to clean the surface and a second towel from the chlorine bath to sanitize the surface. Each towel should be well wrung out so that the table is left damp but not wet. Allow the table to add. That's dry. true. They care about the food, not your, you <laughs> not you. Have to be clean and sanitized. You're the worker. For every use, we've been you can be replaced. Things the customers touch, like plates, cups, silverware, tables, and menus. Now let's focus on the grill. Omelet cups must be cleaned and sanitized and stored upside down after each use. That's why you have several of them. An omelet cup. It's not cup. good enough to just spray them out with the cold water pre-rinse before running them through the dish machine, omelet cups should be scrubbed omelet? clean beforehand. If How do you, you make an omelet with an omelet you cup? in a very short time. When it's slow, grill tools omelet? should be cleaned and sanitized after each use. But during a rush or on a busy shift, our tools are considered in continuous use. Why have use. I never heard of an omelet our cup? for tools in continuous use is to clean and sanitize at least every four hours. Your spatula, grill scrape, and chef's knife should be swapped out for fresh ones, not only at shift change, but also once during the middle of the shift. 
Use the two towel system to clean and sanitize the cook's board too. Sanitize. <laughs> Storing chemicals safely is something we all have to pay attention to. You did miss chemicals the hand-to-hand -hand combat section, yeah. Food. It was pretty, has pretty all intense. Chemicals on the lowest shelf on the rack and doesn't have any food stored on it. Just like when you work with any other tool, your job is not finished until you put your tools away. Always take the extra few seconds to put chemicals away. Always bleach Play your lettuce. So is an accident waiting oh, to happen. Never mind, don't bleach your lettuce. Very, very sick. Garbage can contaminate food and equipment if it's not handled safely. It can also create odors and attract pests. Remove garbage as quickly as possible. Make sure the garbage bags are securely tied off and that you keep the dumpster doors closed. As often as needed, take your garbage cans to the can wash out back. And there you go, wash those garbage cans. Inside and out. If the Nothing like a good out, garbage can you wash. Use to go supplies, you will have to clean and sanitize dishes, glasses, and cups in the three compartment sink. The three compartment sink setup. <laughs> it's true, pests can be friendly sink. pets if you it name them. It's also available in the cleaning and sanitizing <laughs> section of the Waffle House way in the back of your CNT. Become familiar with this setup. Your health inspector may ask you. Should you use gloves while moving garbage and food? <laughs> Don't ask questions. Some states may have different procedures. <laughs> nah, we're fine. You are now able to pre-clean waffle bakers outside in Georgia, and other states may soon allow this as well. Every restaurant should have the latest version <laughs> of the waffle baker cleaning post. You can clean them state. outside in Georgia, the but Texas? The waffle bakers Good is luck. Rotate them daily. Don't wait until the grids turn black. Just as you learn in the other parts of the video, your food safety baton has several reminders about proper cleaning and sanitizing. It reminds you to change the chlorine solution, have your chlorine test strips available, store your chemicals properly, and complete end of shift cleaning responsibilities. Be sure to use this great tool. Well, that's the fourth and final cornerstone Woo! of food safety. Cleaning and sanitizing is an important part of providing safe food to our yes. customers. I hope you've enjoyed our presentation on the four cornerstones of food safety. Food safety is an important part of a great customer experience, but it's more than that. Practicing good yeah, I don't know if people use chlorine for cleaning now. <laughs> temperature abuse, preventing cross contamination, uh, and maybe they do. I don't know. I doubt it. Are just the right things to do. Our customers should know that when they eat with us, the food will be delicious, served hot and fresh, and just the way they ordered it, and that there won't be any unpleasant surprises later. Thanks for your attention, and thanks for all you do under the yellow sign. Hey. No problem, dude. I got it. <laughs> no problem. I'm going to take this information and use it to be the best Waffle House employee that I can be. Um, great to know. <laughs> Daytime Crendor, yeah. Although I'm, uh, I'm actually going to stop here because I do have to go to the gym. So... That's good. Yeah, you know what? Good daytime Crendor session. We do have to do, we got to do a Garfield. Hold on. We got to do a Garfield. Here we go. Uh, full screen. Garfield time. Let's see what he's got. Garfield. What are you doing today, Garfield? I thought I'd finish my memoirs, then paint the house. I sent sarcasm. And then it's on to community service. <laughs> oh, ho. Hey, Garfield. All I ask is that you move enough so I don't have to dust you. Work, work, work. <laughs> Garfield sleeping. Garfield kicking. His daisy stomping dream. Garfield loving destruction while he's asleep. I had a busy day. Me too. Mine was about eight years ago. <laughs> Alright, that's a pretty good one. Cats in the jungle must hunt for every meal. I used to do that. Before we put the pizza place on speed dial. <laughs> uh, you know some cats jump up and romp about the house for no reason at all. So, not in our lifetime. Oh, oh and there he is eating. Look at that Garfield eating. That's a weird looking Garfield, actually. <laughs> Look at that guy. <laughs> Garfield, everybody. <laughs> all right. That's going to do it for me. Hopefully you enjoyed the day stream. We got to watch Jesse Cox laughs. We got some wow alpha stuff. We got waffle house. What a day. Uh, I'll be back later tonight with my regularly scheduled programming of super Kaizo Ironmon and suffering. I want to play. I actually want to play mega man X. I bought the mega man X bundle, uh, on Nintendo. So I might 
I might play that later tonight first before I do Super Kaizo. We'll see. It depends on how I'm feeling. Uh, Because, yeah, I, I played a lot of those back in the day on Super Nintendo. So I'm curious to replay them and see how they hold up. I mean, I know they're good, but I kind of want to just relive that. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, resubscribing, dropping bits, tips, gifting subs, watching ads, or just hanging out. Uh, thanks, buddy, for doing that. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, click the follow button. Click the bell. Be alerted when I go live. And I'm going to go to the gym. And I'll see you later. Okay? Okay. See you. Pa 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 p